<clears throat> so let's have a look at uh, today's verse. And today's verse is uh, Canto 1, chapter 7, verse 6. Because we've recited the Sanskrit already, I'll just uh, re repeat the translation. <clears throat> And I'll do the recitation of the opening as well. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <clears throat> Translation. The material miseries of the living entity, which are superfluous to him, can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the mass of people... I beg your pardon, it just disappeared off my screen. But the mass, mass of people do not know this, and therefore the learned Vyasadev compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the Supreme Truth. Covered by His Divine Grace, Visi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada is saying that uh, Srila Vyasadev saw the all perfect personality of Godhead. And this statement suggests that the complete unit of the personality of Godhead includes his parts, his parcels also. He saw, therefore, his different energies, namely the internal, the marginal, and the external. He also saw his different plenary portions and parts of the plenary portions, namely his different incarnations. Also, he specifically observed the unwanted miseries of conditioned souls who are bewildered by the external energy. And at last, he saw the remedial measure for the conditioned souls, namely the process of devotional service. It is a great transcendental science and begins with the process of hearing and chanting the name, fame, glory, etc. of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Revival of the dormant affection or love of God does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and chanting, but it is solely and wholly dependent on the causeless mercy of the Lord. When the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. But even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, there is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of material existence. Such mitigation of material affection does not wait for development, for transcendental knowledge. Rather, knowledge is dependent on devotional service for the ultimate realization of this. Hare, Hare Krishna, Smita Mataji, can I, can I, can you be on mute, please? Thank you. Oma Gyana Timuranda Shya Gyana Jana Shlakaya Chukshuvan Mirtam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Manu Sam Sapitam Yena Bhutane Swayam Rupa Kadama Yandadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Bharatamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raguna Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvaputanam Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vishavanu Sute Devi Pranama Me Hari Priye Vansha Kopa Tarapescha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patita Nam Pavanadhyo Vaishnavadhyo Namo Namo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Shri Gurana Shras Guru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So dear devotees, I'm seeking your blessings to be able to 
share and serve today. Um, and, uh, you know, together we can be enlivened, um, enlightened uh, through Sadhu Sangha. So the translation, um, I think somebody has, uh, whoever's got rights to share screens with me, uh, could you please just not um, touch it because I, I keep losing my um, uh, my uh, what I put up. So if that's okay, if you just not touch it, please. So <clears throat> the translation is saying the material miseries of the living entity are superfluous to him, and they can be directly mitigated by linking to pure devotional service. So in other words. There is only one way uh, the Bhagavatam is telling us that we can overcome uh, suffering and uh, miseries within this world. And the miseries are what? Birth, old age, disease, death, and then the other issues like the Adhyatmi, Kadigoti, Kadidevi. But uh, Lord Krishna, who is the Bhagavatam himself, uh, what is said here is that the mass of people do not know this. And therefore, the learned Vyasadev compiled this Vedic literature is in relation to the supreme truth. So at the moment, let me just give you a quick background. There are three conversations going on. The first one is between Sukadev Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj. And then later on, uh, we've also got at the same time, uh, Shonaka Rishi and Sutta Goswami having conversations about um, Sikharev Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj. And of course, there's the other conversation that's going on uh, or has gone on, which is Vyasadeva's conversation with his guru, um, Narada Muni. So, you know, Vyasadeva's um, reflected very carefully on what his guru has told him. And uh, part of always having a guru is that the guru is able to see things that we're not able to see. And you can imagine Srila Vyasadeva has written all these massive texts, texts and literatures. And actually what these literatures are doing is they're only uh, perpetuating uh, material miseries because until uh, we can actually come out of the material world um, and have pure devotional service, then we can have, uh, then we can truly and uh, truly connected to the Lord. Until then, we're disconnected from the Lord and connected to the whole cycle of birth, death, disease. Um, and whether we're in the low planets, um, or the middle planets or the highest heavenly planets, all of this will take place. So um, what Vyasadev goes and does now is he, after his guru leaves, he then goes into a meditation. And uh, what's interesting about this meditation, dear devotees, is that um, he's not meditating on the Supreme Brahman, okay? Because there's a level of, uh, well, there's impersonalism there, but of course it's the Lord's energy. Remember it says in, in the purport that he saw the different energies, namely the internal, the marginal, and the external. So he's seeing the external energy, he's experiencing, he's perceiving everything within the world. Um, and so when someone really deeply experiences the external energy they will feel all the highs of joy but also the lows the pains everything because as arjuna saw the virat root of the lord uh it was quite frightening for him he saw everything absolutely everything so here um Vyasadeva is getting an experience of this but he's also getting an experience of the marginal energy which is the living entities which is us you know, the marginal because we can be um, partly in the spiritual world, but partly also in the material world. And this is why we suffer because um, our in inherent nature is um, 
with Satyadananda Vigraha, we're part and parcel of the Lord. Our, our makeup, our spiritual genetic makeup is that uh, of connected to the Lord. But because of our um, desires to be independent of the Lord, uh, then uh, we are in an incongruent situation. So he's, ex he's actually seeing this and he's experiencing this and, and the challenges, but then he's also experiencing the Lord's internal energy. So um, in his meditation, um, he goes beyond just seeing the Brahman, uh, you know, the Brahman realization. Uh, he goes beyond uh, even, uh, he has partial uh, connection with the Lord within the heart, the Paramatma. Um, but what he's done, he's gone to the next step, which is that the Lord can be realized in three different ways. And the, and the other way is uh, realizing the Lord in his actual um, form, uh, his glories, his pastimes, um, about hearing about the Lord, um, uh, chanting about the Lord. And uh, so why? Why? Because it's to awaken his dormant affection um, for, for the Lord. Now, unless we know someone and unless we know about their qualities and their characters and their pastimes, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult for us to develop a relationship. So similarly, here we're learning that uh, the secret of uh, connecting the secret advancing in our spiritual life is actually um, developing this very personal relationship with the Lord. That he, um, in the prayers of um, Sanatan Goswami, the Lord is our mother, he's our father, he's, our, he's everything to us. You know, he can be any of one of those things. And ultimately in the spiritual world, we are connected to one personal relationship to the Lord. So here's the essence for us to really be able to take away that if we want to eradicate any unwanted miseries, then um, the secret, and as it sounds preposterous, for the material senses, for the material vision, because we're so numbed by uh, the material energy, because it's a heavy, dense energy. We're numbed uh, into actually experiencing uh, what it is to experience the Lord in his full essence. And so if we're numbed, then of course, we're not going to be able to perceive um, or experience um, the joy that only uh, being connected to the Lord, his form, his pastimes, his glories, his qualities, um, his paraphernalia, his incarnations, and even his devotees. Because through his devotees, we learn what it is like to uh, be connected to the Lord. So it's the only, only, only way to actually overcome uh, the unwanted miseries of uh, the external energy, which is so, so bewildering. It's so bewildering, ladies and gentlemen, that even if we've advanced so much and we think we're, we're just almost right there, um, it can bewilder us. And we can see that time and time again uh, through uh, the meditations of Bharat Maharaj, uh, he's so advanced, he's almost there. Uh, and many, many other devotees who are great kings that read about in the Bhagavatam are almost there. Um, but uh, because of some anartha, and remember um, the anarthas that often we see, which are uh, very much, um, what's the word, uh, evidential. Uh, because of our material conditioning, our, uh, our um, you know, irreligion, that we don't f follow certain practices, uh, we, we're, you know, we're always, there's some kind of falsity and bluffing that, go, that goes on, cheating, lust, anger, greed, all of these things. And yes, yeah, some of them manifest in a very subtle way, but on the whole, they're very, 
but but at at a, at a very advanced level, um, whilst being in the mode of goodness makes you qualified to start accessing devotional surveys, um, there there may still be tinges of pride, and with pride comes contempt, uh, arrogance, the ego comes in. So even at the very highest level, uh, you know we are riddled with this disease of the ego um, and um, ego and pride. Um, so, Srila Prabhupada here, I'm just looking at the uh, purport that um, the only, only way Srila Prabhupada says that we can come over, the, get over this, the remedial measure, you know, if we really want to get to the root of the disease and we want to eradicate it, then um, it's the process of devotional service. But Srila Prabhupada warns us here that um, it's, you know, it's a great science and it begins with the process of hearing and chanting. So we've, we've, we, we've learned this, and we've read about this in the Bhagavatam, that right at the beginning, the whole process of um, having the qualifications to be able to hear, even if you, even if like in this, in the arena of um, Sukadev Goswami, when all the, when, when all the sages gather um, and, you know, this awful thing has happened to Parikshit Maharaj and the, all the sages are qualified to speak Bhagavatam, but they sit quietly and humbly and just then walks this young man who looks mad and disheveled and is naked and the kids are laughing at him and the women are making fun of him and externally he looks like a madman. Um, and that's one of the diseases of, uh, of being uh, in tune with uh, our external material nature that we don't have the capacity to be able to Mm, differentiate between those who are advanced and those who are not uh, because the ego steps in it wants to judge and thinks well who can, how can this young boy who looks like riffraff he looks you know rejected of society ostracized how can he be qualified but these great souls uh, they understand this and they the beginning of the Bhagavatam and time and time again, even these conversations between Sutta Goswami and Sukadev Goswami and, um, so, uh, sorry, uh, Sutta Goswami and Sukadev Goswami. No, um, Sutta, Sutta Goswami and Shona Karishi. Um, and, and the sages when Sukadev Goswami is speaking, they're all silent. They're, they're listening attentively, even though if they know uh, the whatever that is being discussed, uh, just like many of you, many of you will know Bhagavatam, many of you will be very versed with it. But the but the qualification is that you know, time and time again, can we listen humbly? Because um, the Lord, the Lord's glories and his pastimes are always ever increasing. So one of the one of the qualifications is not just to be able to hear and chant and listen to the glories of the Lord. But every time you hear it, it it's like you can't get enough of it. And, and that is how one uh, revives the dormant affection for, for, uh, for the love of Godhead or, um, you know, to have that loving exchange with the Lord that that's personal because the Lord is a person and he feels things and he experiences things and he's all his qualities of compassion and love and uh, cleanliness and he, his, um, his limitless opulences of wealth, fame, fortune, um, intelligence, strength, um, renunciation. These are, um, you know, one of the wonderful qualities of the Lord. And when, when, and when we are around people who may demonstrate some of those uh, beautiful qualities, uh, the ego gets in and goes, you know, becomes envious. So we, we ultimately, we're here because we've been envious of the Lord. So we, we have to, ladies and gentlemen, overcome 
our envy towards others and also the Lord. And that is that we can, and, and, and we know that that disease is eradicating from us when, we're in, when we love listening to the glories of other devotees. We love listening to the Lord himself. And of course, the Lord is fully, fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of a devotee because, you know, it's not so much the outcome, but it's about the sincerity and starting somewhere. You know, we, we fall off the wagon, things go wrong, you know, we're inflicted by the modes of material nature, and then we think we are the doers. But somehow, um, we're not the doers, you know, the false ego makes us think that we are the doers. And um, ultimately, everything, everything rests on the Lord's causeless mercy. So here's a caveat. We're chanting every day. You know, we're following the process of hearing. We are... Um, you know, we're trying to undertake devotional service, but why is it that we're still bombarded by these miseries? You know, the mind, uh, the inability um, to control anger, uh, a, un, the, the limitless desires that we have, the frustrations we feel, um, the inability to tolerate uh, situations, um, the, these are happening to us all the time, but the only, again, the only way here, Srila Prabhupada is telling us that, you know, we can be chanting mechanically, but it's not, it's not enough. It is not enough to just um, chant, because we can be chanting forever mechanically, but we need the balance. We need um, understanding who the Lord is. Uh, what his energies are, um, what, um, what is it about the material world that we're trying to get out of, yet it's so alluring for us. And at the same time, we, we try to, um, well, we just try to understand who the Lord is, because when we begin to understand who the Lord is, then our chanting changes as well, because we're now calling to that person who we're having a personal relationship with. Oh, my Lord, you know, um, I, I only want you, like Shila Prabhupada says, you know, chanting and crying out like a, a, a child, a baby cries for its mother. You know, um, we can only do that when we have that deep, 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 loving relationship and that longing for the Lord. And until then, even if we have Brahman realization, even if we have partial realization of the Paramatma within the heart, the Lord within the heart, who's always there, who's always guiding us, he's our well-wisher, he never abandons us, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, he stays with us. Uh, but even with that, it's not quite enough um, Srila Prabhupada's got to the heart of it. You know, if you really want to advance spiritually, then devotional service starts with, of course, hearing the Lord's name, quality, fame, pastimes. Um, I think I'm going to stop there and uh, ask if anyone's got any questions or, or um, any realizations or if anybody would like to contribute and add your own thoughts to this, um, it's most welcome because I think this part, we should, we should all have a discussion. We should all contribute and, you know, it'd be lovely to hear from all of you, whoever wants to say something. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, it was a very beautiful session. You know, it's really deep and there's a lot to understand, contemplate on. First, really, you know, get to the bottom of it to understand what is missing, where and where do I need to, you know, pull it back onto the track. And uh, uh, Mataji, my question is, you mentioned uh, the, the true love or the liberation 
uh, the pure devotional service does not really depend upon the quantity of our chanting or hearing, but it's about, it's purely based on the mercy of the Lord. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, what's your name? Um, Krishna Shailam. So thank you for that lovely question, she, uh, Krishna. Let me clarify it. Uh, our, our advancement is, uh, le let me um, correct that. If you thought I said that our advancement isn't just dependent on the chanting or the chanting itself, uh, because it, right now in Kali Yuga, um, you know, the Yuga Dharma is uh, Sankirtan, you know, the chanting of the Holy Name, because that clean cleanses, cleanses us. So, but what I'm saying is that we can, um, make our chanting potent by developing what here, uh, what Vyasadev did and what Srila Prabhupada is telling us. That is to meditate on the form of the Lord, his pastimes, his glories and all of that. So if we really want to advance in our um, chanting, uh, then, you know, it's, 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 it's both. But what I'm saying is that when we start having that personal connection with the Lord through his fame, his glories, pastimes, qualities, then our chanting will improve because then we know why we're chanting. Do you know what I mean? We know who we're chanting to. We know what we're chanting for. Does that, does that answer your question, Krishna? Yes, yes Mataji. Understanding the relationship and establish that bonding can make yeah. them absorb and go deeper. Yeah, that's yeah. when the chanting is more benefit. Yes, Mataji, yeah. truly wonderful. wonderful. That's, a great, that's a great question, Krishna, actually. And you know, when we think about real life, um, at the moment, you know, um, all over the Western world, the, the government are having to set up uh, units for mothers and babies because mothers who have given birth and have not connected to their children, the, the babies are at risk of abuse. Um, and of course, you know, the chances are with some mothers, if they've had a difficult neighbor, they've had postnate, uh, you know, maybe postpartum psychosis, they suffer from mental health, uh, because all of these things are, you know, not everyone has that kind of support. And so if there's that disconnection between that critical relationship between the child and the mother, then um, there's a disconnection for the whole life. You, you know, there's so many, there's room for so much uh, trauma. So similarly, if we are um, not taking care of our, um, why we're chanting, we're chanting to connect to the Supreme Lord and, and to be able to chant for the Supreme Lord, we've got to understand uh, here what Srila Prabhupada is telling us, which is, you know, that personal relationship with the Lord. Otherwise, we're, we're in danger of, you know, how many lifetimes have we been so disconnected with the Lord? You know, so we've got to somehow reestablish that, um, uh, that umbilical cord that, uh, that we have with the Lord, you know? So, yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, thank you, Krishna. Really Wonderful great. and very substantial session, Mataji. Thank, thank, thanks a lot for this one. Truly wonderful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Um, there's something here on uh, 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 an iPhone message which is saying crying for the divine, then crying for material things. Does this balance us? And for those who just cry for their fate, any guidance on the Bhagavatam? Well, well that's a, I think there are two questions there, you know. Of course, uh, you know, we're always, uh, and I don't know quite how sincere are cries for the divine because of it all, you know there are different types of people who come to the lord and one of them is those who suffer who are frustrated because you know they want things and they they they're, fr they're frustrated because even their ego lets them down the ego tells them you know entices them seduces them don't worry you know i know everything just trust me and i'll take charge and time and time again you know, we get slapped down because the material things are not going to make us happy. You know, often we're told that whatever, whatever actually is, uh, this, this verse, Santoshi Sadasuki, whatever is meant to come for us, to us effortlessly, that's our material lot. If we start um, over ambitiously 
um, trying to be, uh, you know, trying to gain material things. And of course, we're going to cry. We're going to cry about our fate. So what's the guidance in the Bhagavatam? Well, the guidance in the Bhagavatam is that we learn by the characters who, like, for, for example, um, Chitraketu Maharaj, he so wanted uh, a child and he's got 10,000 wives and none of them can bear a child. And he's so beside himself because, you know, here he is as a great king and, uh, you know, he's got a duty, he's got to have an heir, but somehow or another, you know, none of his wives can produce a child. So um, he's lamenting. And just then uh, one of the Munis is passing by. And I think it was, I, I, I won't quote it because I can't remember the name, but, you know, he, he said, all I want is just this child, you know, and then all my problems will go away, you know, and he was so adamant that by having this one child, all his problems will go away. And sometimes we think like that, if I have this one thing, all my problems will go away. Well, of course, that's a victim mentality, because A, you know, um, you know, what is allotted to us, according to Ishapanisha, Ishwashayadam Sarvam that um, whatever is allotted to us will come to us. So it's the ego that's crying out. And so with Chitraketu Maharaj, eventually the sages relent and they say, okay, but it's not good for you. You know, we'll, we'll give it to you. It often happens, you know, we sometimes ask for the wrong things. We think, okay, this is gonna make me more comfortable in the material world. So he has a child and, and they told him his name will be Harsha Shaw. That, you know, whatever your desires were, he's going to, you know, he's going to bring you misery. Anyway, he has this child and then, um, you know, he, he's infatuated with the wife who gives him the child. He neglects the other wives. They get resentful and envious. And eventually the child is uh, killed, you know, he's poisoned. King Chitraketu again begins lamenting because now he's, he's lost the child. He's so beside himself, like how could that happen? The, the truth is he wasn't meant to have the child, but he tried to force the material energy to, you know, and the devotees to give him that. And because he was in so much anxiety and pain, they said, okay, you know, you haven't learned. Uh, this is what the grandma says as well. You haven't learned, there you go again. So anyway, when the baby dies, the child dies, you know, he's now saying, well, bring it alive, bring it back alive. You know, I want you to bring it back alive. Anyway, for a mo for momentarily, the sages bring him a, a, this boy alive and he says, boy comes alive and, and you know, Chitraketa Maharaj goes to the child and says, do you remember me? You know, his child is looking bewildered and the father's saying, you know, do you remember me? Do you know who I am? Uh, he said, I'm your father. And the child says, well, which father, which lifetime? And of course, that's, that's the nature of the material world. So we can learn from that, that with Maharaj Chitraketu, you know, that he, he was crying out, as you said, you know, uh, he was advanced, he was a devotee of the Lord, but he was also crying out for material things. And of course, it didn't balance him. Um, and time and time again, this is the whole thing about Vyasadev. You know, we're reading about Vyasadev right now because he's, he's thought, you know, he's thought, and anyone who's a writer will tell you this, he starts off thinking, I've got the solution. You know, I'm gonna write these wonderful books because, you know, it will give people direction. Um, but actually what happens, he himself within his heart doesn't feel quite satisfied. And that's the nature of even us, you know, that we are in this material world and it's the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, but deep within our heart, we, we know that uh, it's the next thing isn't going to satisfy us, you know, um, but yet we're so seduced by the false ego um, who thinks, you know, I'm the controller, the false ego who thinks, you know, leave it with me, you know, I know how to make things happy, you know, quick win, quick gratification. So the Bhagavatam is giving us loads and loads of examples, uh, starting with Vyasadeva, because 
Vyasadev, you know, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And in some ways, Vyasadev's attempt to write all the literatures is the road to uh, hell for many because, you know, time and time again, you're stuck in the samsara. You're just going round and round and round in circles. So we're now learning that Vyasadev is realizing, oh, you know what? That's not going to solve the miseries of the uh, of people, you know, because these uh, huge Vyasadev is, you know, an incarnation of the Lord, um, and these great souls, they know, they know themselves from first hand that that is not that what's going to, um, you know, help people. You know, we've just had Navratri, and it's great. You know, it's wonderful. It's such a a blessing, um, but you know some. Some people, they just, they see the small picture and they get stuck there, but, you know, they're crying out for the different Matajis or the Ma, the forms of Ma, uh, to protect them, to give them the child that they want, to give them the husband they want, uh, you know, all of these Vrats and all of these things. But remember, they're, they're only until uh, this lifetime, you know? And that's the, the challenge of even asking the demigods for material things, that they, you know, they leave us when we die, you know. Uh, but the only thing that we can take with us is that um, that very huge, heavy, priceless collateral, which is uh, hard for the material senses to equate. But um, when we're rid of our anarthas, we can understand and appreciate and see that it is the, the devotional service which is really the, the thing. But you know, part of Bhagavatam, you know, that's why we all have to read it together and we have to discuss it together. Because if we don't discuss it together, then with our limited understanding, um and our anartha we will only get a little bit but when we're together in sangha we just get so much more from each other you know through the questions through the asking through the contributions so i hope that um i mean that's why really you know iphone whoever you are that's why we're reading bhagavatam you know it's the it's the sole reason Thank you for a very, very wonderful session. It just uh, your uh, response there reminded me of a, of a wonderful response that uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Swami has given to a similar question where I think it was asked that we have desires. How do we, what do we do with those? And he said, if we have those, we should still vocalize them to Krishna, not anybody else, but we should still go and ask for Krishna that desire, whatever it is material, because it's not going to leave us. But to spiritualize it, to make it into bhakti, we should turn that uh, into, into um, a desire if it pleases Krishna. So if it pleases you, you give me this job. If it pleases you, you give me this child. If it pleases you, you do X, Y, and Z, yeah. which is a wonderful way of converting that desire that's material desire into because we, we are we are materialistics and we know we at least i am very fallen in a very respect, every respect and therefore we still have these ongoing desires but to try and convert those desires um into something that pleases krishna we should still go and ask them for, for krishna but ask them in a way that it, if it pleases you and that way he knows what's best for us we don't if you're not supposed to have it it doesn't please him we don't get it so it's a, it's a i thought it was a really nice way of uh, uh, turning that situation around where we can convert our desires to something spiritual thank you um Zedish Bhai. and it's a beautiful very practical uh example of how we can all apply that in our life you know if it pleases you my lord um and you know it's for my highest good you know, shall I do this? And then the Lord will guide us, you know? Uh, the, the, the question is, are we going to hear the Lord's guidance or is the ego going to intercept? 
But like you, what you said, Salish, by we have to absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, start exactly where you've shared what what Bhakti Rasamrita Maharaj said. It's the secret of where to start. So thank you for that contribution, Salish Bay. And one other thing as well, I think it was yeah. a, the earlier question from um, uh, Krishna Srila Mataji was again, again wonderfully answered by you. But again, we are reminded that the, the answer lies in what's coming from this Sunday, Kartik month. It's all about Damodar, i.e. when Krishna is died, there were two fingers short and two fingers short with the endeavor of the devotee and the mercy of the Lord. So our endeavor has to be there at all times and then only with the mercy come. If our endeavor isn't there, then the Lord may not reciprocate with the mercy. Of course he can, he's, will, he's free to do it at any time he wants, but our endeavor must be there in order for us to be able to bind Krishna. So yes, the chanting and Krishna's mercy are both equally required. Uh, so thank you. No, thank you, Sayesh Bhai. You know, it's wonderful to hear your contribution because, and you know, that endeavor, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, uh, it doesn't come straight to, you know, the, we have to keep endeavoring and endeavoring and endeavoring and endeavoring and having the patience and the utsaha, the, the enthusiasm, you know, we must never let that die because we just got to have faith and keep going, you know, the, the ego and the mind says, oh, you know, when's this going to happen, but, you know, and that's why that's the beauty of, you know, starting from Sunday that we we'll all have the association of um, the Damodar month, the Lord's pastimes with each other, and, and to be able to pray together and, and offer candles. And hopefully many of you will also not only offer this at, uh, offer the candles at home, but also intermittently come to the manor. You know, it's such a wonderful thing when we're all together, because then we realize we're all in this uh, together, you know. And I suppose having this um, Chad class is, is one of those things, isn't it? That, you know, the, if there's Bhagavatam is the only sane solution to, our, uh, to helping us actually understand um, and connect to the Supreme Lord. And if he's pleased with us, he'll reveal lots of things to us, you know, not in the head, but in the heart. Um, Anybody else? Mataji, if nobody is, can I ask another question? Yes, of course, Krishna. Okay. Um, so you said, like, well, while, uh, you know, um, Chitrakit Maharaj was crying for a baby, he was craving for one, while it was not in his part in his destiny or you know whatever it was not meant for him and while Dhruva Maharaj actually prayed for the kingdom and the Lord was pleased but then you know by the time the Lord appeared Dhruva Maharaj lost the interest for the material you know desire for the kingdom but then uh, the Lord ultimately however fulfilled his wish and it's also said the Lord would fulfill all the material desires of us of ours before he takes us back um, you know to the Godhead so in this case, is this is this an opportunity where the Lord is like finally finishing off, you know, all our material desires, or is this where things just come to us, like as per the destiny or as per the previous karma, whether we deserved it, whether what that was meant for us or it's not meant for us, or is this something that the Lord is bestowing, even there may be something that's coming to us, but it is not nice to have for us. We're still going through the troubles. But yeah. just because we deserved it by some or the other previous life and it is coming for us, even though the Lord is not very happy, but we need to go through that. We need to take that up because we deserved it at some point of time. How, how does it exactly work, Mataji? So there's two levels, Krishna. Um, you know, we're in the material world and for many lifetimes, whatever choices we've made, there are choices because we have free will. So of course we'll have reaction and karma uh, and, you know, uh, my mother used to say, you know, you know, you've got to, you got, you know, there's no way except to go through that. But of course, it's mitigated when we take shelter of the Lord that, you know, it is said that, and Prabhupada tells us, the devotees tell us 
that when we take to devotional service, we probably deserve a lot more than we get. But because of the Lord's mercy and the devotee's mercy, it's, it's, it's fairly mitigated. But there's also the other side where Srila Prabhupada, and I, and I, can't, I can't quote the verse, um, but I was reading it recently that, so, the, you know, we, so that's one experience. But then the other is because the Lord is ultimately the permitter and the sanctioner, he may put the devotee through challenges uh, just um, as Srila Prabhupada says, these are Srila Prabhupada's words, not mine, uh, to drag the sincere soul to the Lord. So this is the, this, if we say it's all karma, Krishna, then there's a, there's a vindictive side to us or somebody else. And we can say, well, you got what you deserve. And sometimes we can even turn on ourselves and go, oh, that's what you deserve. But sometimes it's not quite that. It could also be that it's the Lord uh, accelerating our um, advancement um, to him. But, but as, as devotees, we should see that for others. You know, when the others are going through difficulties and challenges, we should say that's the Lord since, you know, trying to drag the sincere soul. And then for us, we should say, I'm so sorry, my Lord, you know, I probably deserved more, but somehow or another, you know, you've mitigated probably more than what I deserve because that's a level of humility. Otherwise the ego sets in and thinks, oh, you know, I'm such a great soul, the Lord's dragging me. Uh, and so there's a dark side as well because we can, um, in our suffering, there's a perverted side that we can dwell on it, like the victim. Uh, so we, we don't want to um, dwell on that in, in that in that way uh, or enjoy that, oh, this is happening to me. It's because Krishna loves me. You know, that's uh, it, it could come across a bit narcissistic. Um, so, so that's that's the way we should see it. Is that all right, Krishna? Yes. Yes, Mantaji. OK. My mind, mind blowing concepts. Thank you so much. And thank you, Shailesh Prabhu, for your inputs. Yeah, it's always Wonderful. great. It's yeah. always great when uh, Salish Bhai and others contribute. You know, it's uh, wonderful. But um, so, on this note, uh, dear devotees, we'll close uh, tonight and um, just taking the dust of your lotus feet and uh, thanking you for your association. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mataji. for a very nice Krishna. class. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you.